Welcome to our two night mini cruise on board Fred Olsen's Borealis, which was actually the first two nights of the 2024 World Cruise, repositioning from Liverpool to Southampton. In this video, we arrive at Cruise Port Liverpool, where we check in and embark the ship. We check out some of the onboard bars and most of the restaurants. We watch a very scenic evening sail away, then enjoy speciality dining in colours and tastes, and some drunken dancing at our first ever silent disco. Our day started off nicely, with coffee and a very tasty breakfast at the Royal Station Hotel in Carnforth, where we'd spent the previous night on our trip down to Liverpool. After a bit of a drive, we arrived at the cruise terminal, where we dropped off our car, checked in our luggage and got our first view of the Borealis. We were too early to check in, so we wandered around and took some pictures of the ship. As the rain started to pick up, we headed inside the terminal building and took a seat, while the Fred Olsen staff worked through the check-ins. This didn't actually take too long and we were soon given our cruise cards and directed down an extremely steep ramp to where the ship was berthed. Where we couldn't wait to get on board. As we boarded, we had a very friendly welcome from some of the crew and one of the ship's officers, who directed us up to Deck 8 to get some lunch. We stopped on the way at the Lido bar for a quick pint. This was a lovely area, one that we spent a fair bit of time in on our two-day cruise. We then moved next door to the Lido buffet, which is a much nicer experience than most cruise ship buffets. You are shown to a table which is laid out for service and there are plenty of waiters to serve your drinks. We decided to have a light snack for now, so we had a couple of small salads, accompanied by a glass of wine of course, followed by a couple of rather nice desserts each. While we were eating, there was an announcement that the cabins were ready. So we headed down to deck two and along the corridor towards our cabin. We soon spotted our case, which made it pretty easy to find which cabin was ours. I'll show you around quickly and upload a slightly longer cabin tour to our channel for anyone who's interested. As you enter, there are wardrobes on the right and bathroom to the left. There's a sofa and a table. Two coat hooks on the wall. Two comfy single beds with a chest of drawers each in between them. The beds can be converted to a double. We didn't bother to ask them to change ours as we were only on board for two nights. Then there's a TV on the wall which can be swiveled out to watch in bed a desk with a chair and a good size mirror above it and three drawers underneath. It's a nice cabin and we are very comfy here. Moving on to the bathroom. We had a decent sized sink with some glass shelves and tooth mugs. A pretty standard cruise ship toilet. A selection of towels. Then a reasonable sized bath with a shower above it. All in all, it's a pretty decent bathroom. 
As responsible cruisers, we watch the muster video on our cabin TV. Then we headed out on deck to check in at our master station. And while we were there, we took some pictures of the cruise terminal and the lighter building. Then we decided to go and explore the ship a bit. Passing through a small but very shiny and photogenic atrium. We couldn't resist stopping here to take some more photos and video. Like so much of the ship, this is a really beautiful space. From there, we headed up to Deck 9 and outside, where we got a good look at the retractable roof above the Lido pool, and a look out over the far bank of the Mersey. While heading towards the aft of the ship. We went as far back as we could go then went down some stairs to the view bar. Which looks like a lovely spot to sit on a dry day than this. Even a decorative fish pond had real water in it today. As the rain picked up, we quickly headed back inside and found ourselves back in the Lido bar, where we dried out with another glass of wine. We moved on again and then upstairs. And we found ourselves in the observatory bar and decided to order a drink. We had a great view out of the window as we waited for our drinks, which were another Shiraz and another French rose. Still feeling restless, we headed up to the sun deck, at the very top of the ship, for another look out around the city. This is a really good space, and no doubt in a week or two, when Borealis reaches sunnier climes, this area will be full of sand loungers and people sunbathing. Today it was pretty wet and cold though. Whilst we were up here, we spotted this unusual looking boat sailing past, which Google told us is the Mersey Dazzle Ferry. By now it felt like at least a couple of hours since we'd last eaten. So we headed downstairs to try out the Poolside Cafe, which is a nice little restaurant area in the opposite corner from the Lido Bar. We ordered another glass of wine, and then I had a ploughman's plate and Suze had her halloumi niçoise salad. We really enjoyed both of these and once we'd finished we headed back up to the observatory for the sail away. Suze got a seat and ordered some drinks and I popped back outside into the gathering twilight to see if there's any sign of us leaving yet.
The ship hadn't cast off, so I went back inside to find another glass of wine waiting for me. I hadn't been inside long before we noticed the ship starting to move. So I went back up on deck to film us sailing away. This was quite cool to watch, as the ship did a full 180 degree turn in the river, which took quite a while, so I speeded this up a bit. There were some really awesome views of the city by night. As we headed out towards the sea. After Sail Away, we finished our drinks. And headed back for the ship to our cabin. Where we got changed and went for a pre-dinner drink in the Morning Light pub. Where there was really good guitarists playing. It's a really nice spot to have a drink. With some great ship related artwork and comfy seats. and it even has its own fireplace. With our dinner reservation rapidly approaching, we headed through the ship, stopping for a quick look at the atrium from the top side. Before carrying on to colours and tastes. Which is the onboard and very colourful Asian fusion restaurant. We have eaten at Colours and Tastes before on the Balmoral, so we were glad to see it was a different menu to try, even though we both loved our last meal. We had a fantastic waiter, Dennis, who was very helpful and also very funny. We started with some interesting and tasty bread rolls. Then we both chose the same starter, the pork sisig, which was awesomely spicy and salty. Dennis bought us a plate of beef mackie roll to try as well, which was also very tasty. For mains, I had the crispy fried chilli beef, which was a really nice enhanced version of one of my takeaway favourites. Sue's had the miso glazed salmon, and we both had sumai and Asian salad as sides. For dessert, we both chose the same, the Chinese spiced chocolate donut, which was every bit as good as it sounds. and we finished off with an espresso. Once again, colours and taste did not disappoint us. Sadly, there wasn't a show on the first night. But we went to have a look around the Neptune Show Lounge anyway. It's a really nice little theatre with fabulous decor and two tiers of seating. At 29 and I find myself wondering What did happen to the last 10? I ran away with my life fast forward Never turn back again as we wanted some after dinner entertainment, we headed up to the observatory. As we'd seen there was a silent disco on. And we've never done one of these, and we thought it was about time. 
where you collected our headphones and we were both soon dancing to completely different tunes. This was a lot of fun, but also pretty tiring. And when the band came back on, we decided we both had more than enough wine and we were pretty tired. So we had one last stop in the buffet where we got a cuppa and some rather disappointing late night snacks. Once again though, the Fred Olsen buffet experience is so much more civilised than most cruise lines. Then we got a final breath of fresh air before heading back to our cabin for some much needed sleep. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we'd be really grateful if you'd consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Good night.